The corporation is seeking to hand over responsibility for the parts of monitoring that are what one source described as inappropriate for the BBC. BBC Monitoring insists that it only uses publicly available so-called open sources and that it's not gathering intelligence. It says it does look at some password-protected jihadi forums, but only on occasions when the password protection has been lifted. Internal emails obtained by Newsnight shed light on the relationship between BBC Monitoring and the government. This is an email from someone at Caversham described as the MOD account manager. It shows the sort of information BBC Monitoring is being asked to find. In this case, material on a money transfer network believed to be involved in funding and supplying weapons to the Taliban. And this is how the BBC press office explained Monitoring's relationship with the intelligence agencies. The intelligence agencies are customers of BBC Monitoring. They do not directly task BBC Monitoring, but like other BBC Monitoring customers, they can commission and pay for additional monitoring reports. The BBC has also told Newsnight that Caversham's customers, including the government and intelligence agencies, not only commission work, but also control whether the material they pay for is shared with BBC News journalists, and if so, which ones. The BBC says that while most of Monitoring's material is distributed widely within the BBC, some of the reports it produces, such as those on jihadi websites, can be seen by only a handful of designated journalists. A small number of reports commissioned by clients are not available to any BBC News journalist. Yes, because be... A former BBC executive who had responsibility for BBC monitoring says such restrictions on the circulation of material produced by BBC staff are unacceptable. When what you're doing is to provide material to government sources only and not to anybody else, then I think that you are deviating from the principles of journalism. And that, I think, is very, very worrying. It's not only worrying, actually, it's extremely dangerous. And I think it should not be done, and it's not consistent with the principles of BBC journalism and certainly of the BBC World Service's standing and integrity. There are lots of restrictions on movements around this building. Downstairs, there are staff, BBC staff, working in operational areas where we've been told we can film but I can't be filmed in those areas. And then there's the activity upstairs. There, there are Americans working for an organisation called the Open Source Centre, some of whose staff is recruited by the CIA, and that area is totally off limits. A rocket and artillery barrage opens the attack. The reciprocal relationship with the Americans goes right back to the Second World War. It's been a sort of open secret. The Americans gather open source material from some parts of the world and the BBC covers other parts. They then share most of the material. But with BBC monitoring now licence fee funded, the partnership with the Americans looks increasingly anachronistic. As for the US material, it's even more tightly guarded than the BBC's. I've been told that while I can be briefed on it, and while the BBC can try to get original documents, it can't guarantee doing so. On the face of it, it would seem to make sense for some of the activities carried out here at Caversham to be done by parts of the government, such as perhaps GCHQ. But for the moment, it remains the case that some of the material produced here by BBC staff can be seen by government officials and not seen by journalists in the rest of the BBC. Earlier I spoke to the BBC's Director of Strategy and Digital, James Purnell. James Purnell, we have a well-established tradition in this country that the BBC is independent of government. Now it was you that said that. That's vital, isn't it? It's absolutely vital that we remain independent from government and we try and protect that the whole time. Now what we saw in that report though was evidence that BBC staff have effectively been acting as subcontractors for the intelligence agencies. Now, how can that be appropriate? How can that match up at all with that aspiration, that dedication to independence? 
let's just go and look at the facts of what they're doing. This is all publicly available information. We declare exactly the fact that we're doing it with the intelligence agencies, uh, as well as with a range of other people, with the big global news agencies, some of our best universities, companies. And what we're doing is going through publicly available information and providing a kind of cuttings and analysis service. Why does the government then restrict some of the information to a tiny handful of BBC journalists, if it's all just out there anyway? So the vast majority of the information is just directly available. Newsnight uses it uh, a lot of the time. Uh, they were encouraged as part of the last licence fee deal to go away and get more commercial revenue. So you imagine yourself, you're one of the people commissioning a report. You could actually have said, uh, no, we're not going to share any of that. What we've tried to find is an arrangement so that all of that insight is available to BBC journalism. So and it is. It's available to the audiences watching this evening. But you can imagine if they were, if you could see the questions that they were asking, that might undermine their... So some of it's not available then? You admit that? No. The, all of the insight and the information is available. The questions aren't always. But so, for example, if, pan if Panorama were pursuing a story, you wouldn't always know the questions that they're asking. And that's exactly what we do here. So that they can ask for these... Uh, sort of get these commercial reports. We, we could change the... But it, so it is the reports that are not available. It's not just the questions. Not all of the reports that are produced at Caversham are made available. The information and the insight is all available for BBC journalists. But not and the reports. The and we're very happy to look at that. So Charter is coming up. We are setting up a working group with the Trust, with monitoring to go through all of these things. And there were some issues of detail which were in your report. And, and those, those can all be looked at. That's absolutely fine. Except Most what people. this suggests, though, is that at very senior levels of the BBC, there's a view that up until now it has been OK for the government to decide which BBC journalists get to see information that's been commissioned by the intelligence agencies and with links to the CIA, and in some cases to dictate that no BBC journalists are allowed to see any of that information at all. That's OK? Actually, when the new management team came in, you're referring to that, we asked ourselves a lot of these questions. That's why we started looking at this last year. And actually, there's very, very good answers, as your report well, showed, to, to the vast majority of those questions. If any of the things need to change uh, as part of the next charter review or in the short term, we're very, very happy to, to look at that. But just to be very clear, as things stand now, you believe that all of the information should be shared with any staff that want to see it. Because as things stand, if I wanted to see information from a jihadi website, for example, that was gathered from Caversham, as a BBC journalist, I wouldn't be able to go but and see it. I wouldn't be allowed. But the, 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 insight, the, the, the insight and the analysis is all available to BBC journalists. When people have commissioned reports, they could have said, we don't want any of it shared. Actually, what we've found is a way that the insight is shared, but people can't see the questions that are being asked, for example. So I'm very happy to look at all of that. It could be you put it on a different basis. You make it all available to newspapers. We, we actually, as part of this review, we want to look at, can we take more of monitoring's work and put it on the website? What do you think? Licence fee payers watching right now, maybe having clicked on the website today, having listened to the radio mm -hmm. through the day, what do you think they would think of some of their £145, 50 pence being used to fund an organisation that has associations with the CIA? So I would say to them, look at our Syria coverage, amazing coverage, which has been vitally informed by the work of BBC monitoring, we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. We couldn't afford to just do this if it was, if it was let me just finish one. If it was just for BBC News, we wouldn't be able to do this. What about some of the evidence we saw in that film, James Purnell? The request for specific information about a jihadi network. That's not exactly the kind of thing that you get just from looking up on the web what was in the newspaper yesterday, looking at cuttings. It's not the same that thing. That is exactly the kind of information which has been vital in our Syria reporting in Iraq, with ISIS, with Ukraine. So there, there is a real benefit. There's a really all of the journalist. all of the uh, insight is available to BBC journalists and is making a difference to our uh, audiences day in day out. But what I'm saying, we are very happy to look at this over the next period. Uh, as we come up to Charter Review and see if we can make it more transparent, exactly like Tess was saying in your film, uh, throw the open window, windows open even more. So should it be part of the conversation then that the BBC just stops doing this kind of work for the government altogether? Wouldn't that be better? I think, you know, this is a, a historic uh, accident that we've done this, but actually you get a huge amount of value as a BBC journalist and as an audience from the fact that it's here. So you but could change is, the arrangements. But this is a, but this is a mess the arrangements. because now it's paid for by no, the licence No, you could change fee. the arrangements, but then you would lose the ability to monitor all of those uh, sources. Well, would it be OK if it's fine for the intelligence services to request commission reports from the BBC? Would it be OK for them to commission a report from Newsnight? 
from other parts of the BBC from the Today programme? Because that's the kind of relationship you're talking about and defending, isn't it? No, this is all codified and put out on the BBC Trust website. It's put under very, very clear rules that they provide that to a wide range of people, to news agencies, to businesses, to newspapers. We're happy to look at you know, widening that and coming to different years. Finally, you are uniquely placed because not only do you have your current role, but you were the Culture Secretary for quite some time. When you were Culture Secretary, would you have been happy for the funding of monitoring to move from the government into the licence fee so that our viewers, radio listeners, website users mm. were paying for this kind of work to take place. Would you have been happy with that? Well, I'm not the Culture Secretary anymore. I work at the BBC and a deal was done for five years for this charter period. We're not going to renege on that. What I'm saying today is that we're going to work with government to look at uh, how BBC monitoring can thrive in the future and what the right arrangements are for the next charter period. Now, what happens if you vow to fight something to the end?